Welcome back to Living 808. The Alzheimer's Association Aloha Chapter needs your help. Folks all across the state and all across the country are invited to do what they love to raise funds and awareness for Alzheimer's care, support, and research. We are learning more about that today. We welcome in Trisha Medeiros, Chief Operating Officer at the Plaza Assisted Living. Also joining us, Jennifer Jungle, a volunteer with the Alzheimer's Association. Hello, thank you both for joining us. Hi. Um, Trisha, why don't we start with you for people who may not understand or know what Alzheimer's is mm -hmm. can you tell us so Alzheimer's is a progressive disease that affects your brain and your memory um, it affects mostly seniors and um, it affects a lot of people's it does. lives right mm -hmm. okay so tell us real quick um, with the Plaza Assisted Living, you guys have had a long relationship and yeah. partnership with the Alzheimer's Association, and so now you guys have kind of um, have had done an event or kind of a, a program or something that you've done at mm -hmm. the center. Tell us what you've done. So for the longest day, people get to choose what they do to fundraise, and so we've done all different types of things. We printed T-shirts and sold them to uh, staff. Um, but last year we did a kind of a throwback to when you're in high school and you got your flower gram. We partnered with Watanabe Florist. We got a bunch of flowers and we allow people, so other residents, families, employees, they can buy a, a rose or a flower for a resident. And those proceeds is what funded um, our longest day campaign with the Alzheimer's Association. Okay, so the longest day is a com campaign that the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. puts on. Uh, but it sounds like it's evolved a little bit where people can come up with their own fundraising yes. idea. So how did you guys come up with that for, for your uh, event? Well, we were starting to have a collection of t-shirts. And so we were like, let's just do something different. Let's do something fun. Um, and it, isn't, it, it involves the residents to be part of the community. Um, so everyone just loved the idea. It was different. And, and it was really successful. Okay, so p other people who may be watching this interview who may have been touched uh, by the Alzheimer's Association, like you, Jennifer, we'll talk mm -hmm. to you about that in a moment, um, but they can also create their own longest day yeah. activity. So June 21st is the longest day of the year, okay. and so you should have enough hours to go out and bake, go out and sponsor a Zoom-a-thon, um, whatever is your interest uh, to, to raise funds. Okay, I love it because really that opens it up wide, yeah. right? It's whatever people are interested in, whatever their passions are, whatever their skill is, they can go and create a fundraiser and you know that money will go to the Alzheimer's Association mm -hmm. Hawaii chapter. I like that. Um, Jennifer, you're a volunteer with the association mm -hmm. um, and I understand that your mother has Alzheimer's disease. Um, can you tell us what it was like for you as her caregiver? It's an extremely challenging disease and for me it was difficult because I lived in Chicago for over 30 years. So several years ago I downsized my job from full-time to part-time. I was actually here when she was diagnosed um, and at that point I was already mid-stage dementia in 2016 and the doctor told me she couldn't live alone anymore. So what turned out originally was going to be a three-week trip. I've basically been here ever since. Mm -hmm. I became her 24-hour full-time caregiver, including getting up at night with her. Um, I'd hoped to keep her at home for as long as possible, mm -hmm. but her um, condition declined to the point that I could not provide the care that I wanted at home. Mm -hmm. So we were fortunate that we found a great care home specializing in dementia care last fall and she's really thrived there. Good, happy to hear that. Um, how did the Alzheimer's Association uh, or their programs help you? I don't know what I would have done without them. After her diagnosis, I convinced my mom to go back to Chicago with me for a couple of weeks so that um, she thought she was going on vacation with me. The reality was I needed to go home, pack up some things and wrap up. Um, my husband and I had to make some really life-changing decisions very quickly. Mm -hmm. So I called their 24-hour hotline, um, got some good guidance, and also the connection here with the Aloha chapter. And when I came back here a couple of weeks later with my mom, I started taking the series of classes that the chapter here offers. 
I would take online classes at night after she went to bed, mm -hmm. and uh, I started going to the support group that I continue to go to. Mm -hmm. So I really encourage any family member who is dealing with this and struggling to really reach out to the Aloha chapter and the Alzheimer's Association because they really do provide a lot of resource and care. Absolutely. Um, it's scary to think about, but you know, thousands and thousands of people mm -hmm. in Hawaii are affected by Alzheimer's. And um, you know, it sounds like through their programs you got educated, but also mm -hmm. you got the support that <clears throat> that you needed. Definitely. Right? I could talk to you for hours. You know, it's so interesting and I'm glad that you did get the support um, that you needed. Mm -hmm. um, if you would like to put on your own fundraiser, we're gonna have that information on our website, but we encourage you to do so. Um, and a lot of the, all of the monies raised stay right here, right at the Ho uh, Aloha chapter, I believe, or or a big part of it at yes. least. So, mm -hmm. okay, we're going to have that information on our website. But thank you both, uh, especially Thanks. you, Jennifer, for sharing yeah. your story with us. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Coming up on Living Eight Away.